Hi, I'm Jamie at Go Power Sports, and this is the Rascal Light. Here's the tools needed to put together the Rascal Light. A hammer, a drill, an impact, a Phillips head screwdriver, your ratchet, your half inch wrench, a 12 mil wrench, a 14 mil wrench, an eight mil socket, a 10 mil socket, 11 mil socket, 12 mil socket, a 19 mil socket, and a 17 mil socket. Two half inch sockets, a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench, then you're gonna need a 6 mil tap, possibly. You're gonna need a 5 16 drill bit, 21 64 drill bit, 5 mil Allen wrench, and your adjustable wrench. First thing, we're gonna install the seat. To install the seat, you're gonna to have to drill some holes. Get your marks. Now, we can set this aside. Then, this first, you're going to need your neck bolt tube. This can be very tedious. You have to make sure they're aligned almost perfect. And you're gonna need a hammer. You're gonna wanna put a washer on the top so you don't damage the bushing and on the bottom once you get the bolt far enough in. You're gonna to wanna to grease that bolt. Then you're gonna to wanna to get your forks, get them aligned. You're gonna need a washer, the bolt. And there you go. And then another washer and your bolt. And you can hand tighten this until the end. You're going to need your 5 16 drill bit. You're going to have to drill out these holes for your riser clamp. And you want to make sure to get them nice and straight. Next, you can get your riser clamps out. They'll come in this nice little bag, and this can be kind of hard to do by yourself. You might want to do this with a friend. Make sure that they line up first. We're good. You're going to want to get your handlebars. You're going to want to get your lower riser clamp. Slide the top right in. Get your holes lined up. And you can hand tighten these nuts on here. This is where the friend comes in handy. Can you hold the handlebar for me? Yeah. Thank you, sir. I think that's all. We'll see. Yeah, can do can AI just scans everyone's phone all the time. Oh, yeah. Alright. A 10 mil. They took it. Seriously, we need a 10 mil. Okay, I'll go grab Zane has the 10 mil. I am transferring ownership of this 10 mil for one second over to Mr. Jamie Bell. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so now you need to put your pocket. 10 mil on the end. Where'd my 10 mil go? <laughs> Just kidding, guys. You can tilt those forward a little. That's, you can tilt them back. Right, back a little more. Right there. You just want to snug these down a little for uh, now. You can adjust them once you build it all. But don't over tighten them because you will break them. I know first. All right. Good. This is where you can install your front wheel or your rear wheel. It doesn't really matter as long as you have it balanced. Um, I like to install the front wheel. So you're going to need to get your front axle bolt. First, you have to peel this sticker off because it will not slide through the bearings. And it's going to come with, if I can count, eight washers. You're going to do four on each side. And there's your front wheel. You're going to want your V 
V-tread pattern facing forward. Axle bolt through, washers on. I shouldn't. And you might have to tap it in with a hammer. And you're gonna have to make sure it's straight so you don't knock the bearing out from tapping it. Keep it a little off-centered so you can get your other four washers on. This is where things can get tricky. Or you can do it like a pro. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you get to the rear is mount your caliper and your caliper bracket. So to mount your caliper, you're gonna want the washer between the caliper and the bracket. Run your bolt through. It's easier if you do one at a time, finger tighten it. So you're gonna want this lever facing the rear so your cable can pull forward on it to make the brake work. And again, washer in between caliper and bracket. Dandy 10 mil. If you can put the 10 mil on it. Rear wheel. Tread pattern. Arrows pointing forward. Sprocket on the left. Sprocket side. Spacer. Sprocket. Don't forget your spacer. All right, this is your spacer. This is your brake. Spacer on first. Brake. Six mil bolt. Make sure everything's lined up. And once you have your rear wheel assembled, you're gonna get your rear axle bolt. It's gonna come with two spacers and some extra washers just in case you need them. Same as the front axle, you're gonna have to pull that sticker off otherwise it will not go through the bearings. You're gonna wanna mount your rear wheel. And the reason you mount your caliper first is so you can make sure that it aligns with your brake depending on the spacers you'll need for the rear. For this one, can take it and measure. And it looks like I'll need a washer in between the spacer. So I'm gonna put my washer on there, put my spacer on there. Make sure that that aligns inside of the caliper. Then your other spacer on the other side. Okay. The next thing I do is I get my chain roller installed just to get it out of the way. And this chain roller will come with different hardware or washers so it's able to spin. You can take the washers that came on it off and you can actually reuse those. Just make sure that they are on the outside of the bracket. Then there is a bag of hardware or washers for the roller. So with your washer on your bolt, slide that through. One of your lock washers. Get your roller on. Your other lock washer. Flat washer and nut. And again, you can finger tighten this until you have the chain on. Next, brake lever. Brake lever is gonna go on the left side of the handlebars. And again, you can let it hang because you still gotta put your kill switch and your grip on. And you want it aligned nice. Brake cable, pretty simple, just like a bicycle. Gonna line it up in this hole over here. Spin it around. 
And you can just spin it to where this slot doesn't line up so the cable doesn't fall out on you. And then you can just set your cable down. Next, you can do your kill switch. You'll need a Phillips screwdriver. Loosen these bolts up. Slide out really nice. And again, you can only finger tighten this until you get your grip on so you know how far over to put it. Then you get your grips, and the throttle housing, and for this left grip, it's usually pretty easy to slide on when you don't have glue on your handlebars. And you can get your grip on. And you can get your kill switch right up against it. And tighten it up. And you slide your brake lever over. And you can tighten this at the end once you're actually sitting on the bike so you know how you want it, how it'll be comfortable for you. So for your throttle housing, you need a 5 30 seconds Allen head. Pull these bolts out, get your throttle cable, run it through your throttle housing. And there may be some metal burrs inside of this housing. You might have to run a screwdriver around it to clean it up so you can get your cable to go in. But once you do that, it goes right through. Put your cable in your throttle tube. Make sure your cable doesn't run away from you. And you can put the top part back on your throttle tube, hand tighten these, just so it doesn't fall apart on you. And then you will slide it on your handle. So. And make sure your throttle tube will twist once you tighten it. Next, we can get our engine. The light comes with a 98cc, yes. Just set your motor on here. The first thing I do, I grab my engine mount hardware. I'm gonna finger tighten everything so I can get my clutch and chain on and get everything lined up. I like to start with it all the way back. You're gonna have to pull your clutch mount hardware out. The clutch on these bikes goes inboard, meaning the sprocket faces the motor. You're gonna slide it on. Make sure your keyway is lined up. You can put your clutch mount bolt back in so you don't lose it. And you can eyeball it to make sure that it's spot on. And once you have your clutch on there, hand tightened, you're going to take your chain, which should have the master link in it. And then you can pop your master link out with a flat head or anything flat. Just make sure it doesn't go flying anywhere. And you're going to want to run your chain. You're going to want to go over the chain roller, around the clutch over the top of the sprocket. And I always install the link through the back so you can get it off easy if you ever need to. Once you have your chain on, you can adjust your engine to get the slack out. Make sure your chain stays straight because your engine can slide left or right. Take the slack out, make sure your chain roller's all the way forward. You don't want it too tight, but you do want it a little snug where you have a little play so you can get your tensioner out to tighten it if you need to, because this chain will stretch over time. Once you have it exactly where you want it, you can tighten up your engine mount hardware. So you're gonna need a half inch socket and a half inch wrench. Clutch bolt, you can use a 12 mil. Zip that on there. Then you need your 10 mil again. Always keep that one in your pocket. And you're going to need your clutch cover and the hardware to mount it. First thing you're gonna do is mount this bracket for your clutch cover with the nut facing the engine. You're gonna get your hardware that comes in the same bag. You can 
finger tighten them. Make sure that you don't cross thread the holes in the engine. So you'll utilize these two holes here with this nut facing the inside of the engine. Then your clutch cover goes on this hole and this hole down here. The easiest way to do it is thread the bolt into the top one and you'll have to line up the bottom and then you can tighten it up. Next, come over here to your brake cable. You can run it however you want. The easiest way is to run it through this top tube, run it down the frame and straight down. And this is gonna be a 10 mil bolt. You run your cable through here, get your 10 millimeter, loosen that. And the cable runs right through the back. The easiest way to do it is spin it and run it over that bolt. And then you can press your finger up against it. And tighten it back up. And now you've got brakes. So you, what you're gonna do is take your throttle cable, make sure it's not touching your muffler. You can run it behind the hoses to keep it away from your pull start. And make sure that it's not on your choke lever, because what you'll do is you'll zip tie this up here. But you're gonna run your cable under this piece. And you're gonna wanna get the end of it right at the edge, so you have full throttle when you need it. Snug it down. And then there's a little hole in this piece here that your cable's gonna run through. So you're gonna run your cable straight through it. Keep it snug so you don't have slack, but you don't wanna pull too hard because it will twist your throttle. And you're gonna get a 10 mil wrench usually and hold this and snug that screw down. And then you've got a throttle. Next, you're gonna wanna hook your kill switch up this is plug and play. This plugs right under here, this male, this female. Plugs right in, nice and tight. Now your ground, you can use any of these tank bolts to ground it. That's gonna be an eight mil. So you're gonna need your eight mil socket. And personally, I like using this one so it's not up here dangling anywhere. bolt through it, get it started by hand, zip it in with your impact, just like that. And the last thing you'll need to do is clean up these wires, get them out of the way so they're not hanging everywhere. But the most important piece, the seat. It will come with hardware for the seat and you will have to drill those holes. It's easiest to do that first so your motor's not in your way and you're not dealing with all that. What I'm doing is driving these in to make sure that they will thread. And this will make it easier for me to get the seat mounted. Next we have the foot peg covers. And I like to wipe these down with some brake clean before I put them on, just to get the grease off so they're not sliding around. This should slide right on. And the final part is gonna be your kickstand. You're gonna wanna pull this pin out. The hook end will go on the pin on the kickstand. So this loop will go around this up here. I'm gonna have to rest slip, get the kickstand in there. Luckily these springs aren't crazy strong. You should be able to get it right in there. And your pin is gonna go through the back side of that. It's easiest to do this with pliers. Have it. Today I showed you how to assemble the Rascal Light 98cc 
it's not too hard and it doesn't take many tools so I think this is going to be the go-to bike from here on out honestly it's got enough power to move almost anyone around y'all be sure to like subscribe comment if you have any questions uh, I'll be there to answer them y'all be careful out there